Dr. Hotek, if you had to describe your work and yourself, what would you say? I was trained as a social scientist, an anthropologist. I also think of myself as a futurist and a remote sensing specialist. That is to say, I use radar technology and laser technology to look at archaeological areas that are very inaccessible. And so, in a very general sense, I'm a specialist in many areas, a generalist of many subjects. When did you first start being interested in social science? As a young man, I was interested in reading everything and anything from the uh, books of antiquity in the ancient Near East to those of the Far East. And I was always uh, taken back by the large gargantuan temples of Egypt in the statue area. I was aware that in order to solve the problems as to why Egypt was so important, I would have to, to learn the disciplines and the languages. And so I spent a fair amount of time at several universities to find out what type of intellectual tools I would need really to open up the back door to uh, the antiquity of the Near East, and for that matter, the back door to our Bible, which has quite a bit of Egyptology, if you look at the book of Genesis. scientific and spiritual groups, working at problem solving and bringing a message of hope. It is his fundamental belief that pyramidal culture and philosophies through the world are linked, and that these stellar observatories signal our alignment, ultimately, to a higher being. In 1973, Dr. Hurtek wrote The Keys of Enoch, which speaks of great change biologically, geophysically, and astrophysically. Dr. Hosek, how did you come by the knowledge to write a book of such huge importance? The, this knowledge was a result of my higher consciousness experience. This morphogenic door that was opened suddenly and dramatically, and a quantum shift took place for me where I was shown scenarios, scenario or mental pictures of where we came from, why we're here, and where we're going. That we as a human race must re examine where we are and in a dramatic sense, these 64 keys or chapters of knowledge open the back door and the front door to history. Dr. Hosek, you talk about forgotten knowledge and future knowledge. What exactly do you mean by that? Knowledge that is not within the classical area of information that goes back, say, uh, be, uh, before the Egyptian period or before the dynastic Japanese period or before the period of the indigenous people in North America areas of information that suggest at one time there was a parent culture or there was a, a culture that connected the diverse uh, peoples and languages and in essence uh, the roots of civilization could be found for all peoples if such a parent culture were found and identified. What do you think would be the value of these discoveries? Well, Given the uh, complexity of uh, post-World War II Europe and Asia with the developing nations seeing themselves uh, as victims of the colonial periods, mm -hmm. seeing the great uh, diversity of religions and the uh, rivalry between various factions, finding of uh, authentic cultures of the historic perspective would tend to unite people and provide a, a dialogue where the pluralism of the human society could be emphasized. In the early 70s, Dr. Hertag and colleagues, using laser technology, found some interesting correlations at Giza, suggesting that ancients used the pyramids as some sort of observatory. But more significantly, that the star shafts align with the Orion complex, pointing to the fact that these structures are much older than the classics believe. Dr. Hirschak, there was a lot of resistance from the Egyptian authorities. Why do you think that was? Uh, there was a bit of, um, how shall I say, uh, friendly anticipation of what could be found. At the same time, there was certain uncertainty as to the use of new technology. Mm -hmm. And so we had to, uh, to show that we would not 
be involved with anything that would violate really the sanctuary and the, the cultural history of that part of the world. Nevertheless, there was a feeling amongst many of my colleagues that going back more than 6,000 years in terms of showing that the, uh, the Bible, the, the Quran, all of the sacred documents are but um, secondary documents to much earlier history which was resynthesized in the written traditions of these great works would be unsettling to, to many of the theological perspectives. Well, by doing this, I suppose you would upset the accepted history and certainly also the sort of tourist culture. Well, I think this is the challenge of life, that, that we are not uh, a host to linear reality, that we have the ingenuity to break out of the, of the shell of history, and that history is really an arbitrary enterprise, whereby scholars agree that they're going to define uh, history. Uh, Egyptology, for example, is considered romantic history by many specialists, yeah. And there are things that are thrown out with the bathwater that maybe do not fit into a particular chronology of what king came first or what emperor came last. And what we have as, uh, as futurists is the unique opportunity to look at the entirety of global culture and to recognize the Great Pyramid in Egypt is possibly but one uh, point of departure for reconciling ourselves with pyramidal objects all throughout the planet. Dr. Hershey, can you explain exactly what the star shafts are? The star shafts are those uh, openings that are on either side of the, the Great Pyramid of Giza that serve as symbolic openings to the stars. Uh, some believe they are air shafts that would permit uh, various currents to come into the inner chambers of the Great Pyramid. Still others believe from what we would call the esoteric traditions of knowledge, that the star shafts would guide the, the soul of the pharaoh from the domains of the earth through the lower heavens to the higher star fields of uh, the imperishable gods, generally associated with the constellation Orion. And so our finding that uh, Delta, Zeta, and Epsilon, the three major stars were precisely aligned with the south star shaft of the Great Pyramid. This was uh, something that we were onto 20 years before popular books appeared with the Orion Mystery and other such titles. But the, the realization that there was a mathematical astronomical connection with the inner chambers and the star shafts, and that these inner chambers were so mathematically and precisely oriented for acoustical and sound measurements and, yes. um, could I say, uh, higher consciousness experience, creative experience, led me to believe that they were put together by uh, architects, masons, uh, scientists who had tremendous acumen, tremendous knowledge at a much earlier period of time. Can you explain the significance of the alignment of the star shafts with the, with the belt of Orion? In my opinion, the significance would show uh, we as a planetary humanity are on the belt of Orion in terms of where our little sun system is in terms of the galactic pinwheel. And the alignment with the Orion belt would be a keen signal as to where the ancients felt we originated as a uh, uh, experimental culture. It would also signal in terms of uh, religious and uh, anthropological symbolism that the ancients believed that there was uh, a, an experiment of life that came from the gods or from the higher, quote-unquote, programmers of uh, starborn intelligence. Mm -hmm. In the context of the Greek philosophers who believed that life was floating throughout the universe is a type of what they would call free-floating sperm. The technical wor word is lagospermatokoi, that the very seeds of intelligence came in from the direction of Orion and somehow the construction of the Great Pyramid and the alignment of the star shaft both a belt of Orion would be a way of saying that this is the mothering culture. We can ultimately reconnect somehow in, in a way of scientific evolution with this culture and uh, we have found in our research even before uh, Egypt I'm speaking now 